Greetings folks, Julian Proper here, bringing you yet another in my series. And folks, in today's world, where unfortunately we may be faced with a situation that forces us to have to defend ourselves now more than in previous years, the world seems to be getting more and more dangerous. So it's always a good idea to carry a force multiplier or something to even the score for you while you're out on the streets, such as your concealed pistol, maybe a knife, some tear gas, a taser, and it is important to have some tools like that with you in order to level the playing field while you're out and about with your family in order to protect yourself and your loved ones. Unfortunately, now more than ever, these items have been needed. But you already have something in your arsenal and you already have an ally with you that you may or may not have even thought about. And folks, nothing on this natural planet can replace the importance of this ally and this ally has a name this ally is called situational awareness so folks in order to explain what situational awareness is there's a complicated way to explain what situational awareness is but the very best way is just to keep it simple because again you've already had this tool in your toolbox and you've employed it several times but most people that use situational awareness are employing it on just an immediate and obvious circle of influence right in front of them. But there's other ways that you can train yourself to actually be more cognizant of what's going on in your surroundings, which is what situational awareness is. It's simply to be cognizant of what's going on around you, to be able to read people and see if you can identify potential threats, to see if someone's acting suspiciously, to see if a situation could potentially go sideways or if it looks just a little bit off or odd, to be able to pick up on that and to formulate a plan in your head about how you're either going to get out of it or how you're going to handle this situation. Basically, the best way to explain what situational awareness is, is it's simply to be aware and to pay attention to what everybody's doing around you. But it may be easier than you think. There are certain things that you can do in your day-by-day -day routine to make this just a little bit simpler and before you know it, it's going to be habit. Come with me and I'll show you some of those things. Besides advising that most people have a fob device to open up their car doors, which these days more people do or most people do, a lot of attackers were successful with their proposed victims because the victims were trying to get keys in a car door and the attacker was able to get to them that much quicker. While if you're running, you can unlock your car door with a fob. That's one thing, okay? So that's a good step in getting into your car, whether it's in the early morning hours or even if it's in the middle of the day in a grocery store parking lot. There's no bad time to be situationally aware when getting into your car. One of the things that I advise people do is before they get in their car, and you're going to be on the other side of your car, but just from this side, we'll just take it from this side to make it easier since we're in the street over here, is to look in the back seat of your car and make sure that there's not somebody already there waiting in the event that you left your car door unlocked. I advise especially ladies to do this. And remember, attackers are always looking for a victim. They're not looking for a fight, they're looking for a victim and they're going to pick the people that they estimate to be the easiest time in getting them what they want. Check the back of your car or if while you're walking up to your car, if you can see underneath your car to see if there's another pair of feet or anything like that, maybe somebody crouching on the other side of your vehicle, check for that too. Because a lot of people surprise people getting into their car simply by ducking out of sight and waiting for this person to get into their vehicle. And so by the time they get to this person trying to get into their car, it's too late because they cannot employ any self-defense moves, draw weapons, or anything like that because they're already on them. And people can cover a lot of ground very quick. People typically don't pay attention when they leave their houses. And it doesn't really matter what time of the day it is. There's never a bad time to be cognizant of what's going on in your surroundings. Leaving your house in the morning, leaving your house in the afternoon, or in the evening, it doesn't matter. There's never a bad time to be situationally aware. A lot of perpetrators are watching their victims to see what time they come and go in the morning, what time they come and go in the afternoon, when do they get home from work. So they may be there stealing something from your house, but they may also be waiting for you to come out of your house so that they can apprehend you and go back into your house. So it's a good idea when you leave your house, and it never hurts, 
to look side to side before you leave your house to make sure that there's not somebody crouched on your porch, in your bushes. Maybe even take a little trip around the corner of your house to make sure that somebody is not standing around a corner getting ready for you to come out because that's the perfect time is when they catch you when you're not aware. That's what situational awareness is all about is to make sure that you are aware of what's going on in your surroundings. We've covered going to your car and we've already addressed the situation of looking in your back seat, maybe crouching underneath your car and looking underneath your car to see if there's an extra set of feet or anything like that, or if you see anything suspicious in your surroundings around your car. And that is also used best in public parking lots, shopping mall parking lots, grocery store parking lots, because many people get attacked from someone coming out of a different car. So if you think that this is an average person walking across the parking lot through the cars but zigzagging their way towards you, or if someone's walking and looking at you, you're going to feel that this is an undesirable situation and you should immediately start thinking. At least be aware of what this person is doing. Watch their body language. See if they're acting suspiciously. See if you might be the subject of their next apprehension or robbery. Um, if you think that you are, do what you can to get yourself out of this situation. More people have saved their own asses using situational awareness than with the weapons they are carrying simply because you're looking for a way to get out of the situation. And if you think that the situation that you're potentially facing could be a situation that you're not going to want to be in, then you've got to start looking for your escape routes. You've got to start looking for the things that you can do. Uh, get your phone ready to dial 911, but don't stare at it. Just make sure that you're aware of what's going on in your situation and that you're paying attention at all times. I cannot stress it more clearly that the perpetrators are looking for a victim and they're looking for somebody that they suppose is going to be an easy victim and you don't want to make yourself the easy victim. One of the worst things you can do is to render yourself incapable of noticing what's going on in your surroundings and how most people do that is with their cell phones. If you're one of those people that walks around staring down at your cell phone not paying attention to what you're doing or you're talking on the phone and you cut off your peripheral vision or your ability to hear better on this side or that side, you are a perfect victim because you're exactly what a perpetrator would look for, someone not paying attention. Or even if you have your earphones on, you're listening to music, staring straight ahead, you're exactly the kind of person that a perpetrator is looking for. You're the one that they want to get a hold of. You're the easy pickings. And so you have to eliminate that by taking away the cell phone element. If you can get away with not using your cell phone for long enough to transit yourself from point A to point B, please do. But if you absolutely must use your cell phone, pay attention. At least look around and notice what's going on. Don't become a victim because of this one thing that you can't do without. Your cell phone is one of your biggest dangers. And folks, I did not cover every single way that you can employ situational awareness. There's just so much. There's got to be hundreds of thousands of different ways to employ situational awareness. For the most part, if you are cognizant, if you are looking around and your head's on a swivel and you know what's going on in your surroundings, you've got most of the battle won right there. And if you can think of any other situations for situational awareness and being cognizant and how it has helped you or any situations that you may or may not have been in, as well as any other ideas for the rest of us to use when we're out and about doing our daily lives, put them in the comments section. We would love to read about them. Now folks, after everything that I've presented to you, you may be tempted to ask what makes me such a self-defense expert. I'm not. I'm not a self-defense expert at all. I'm an experienced concealed carrier, but I am not a self-defense expert. Uh, I leave that to the self-defense experts. As a matter of fact, take any classes that you can take. I would recommend that. Um, take any of your pistol classes, pistol one, pistol two classes. Uh, some tactical classes, carbine classes. I recommend any classes that you can take for self-defense, including uh, hand striking and everything like that, you know. I recommend it, but I'm not a self-defense expert. 
Situational awareness is something that absolutely everybody has at their disposal and it doesn't take a special class. Now, this brings me to the real experts and I'm going to refer you to a YouTube channel and I'm going to refer you to John Correa and Active Self Protection. Now, the reason I do that is because what he does is he gets these surveillance videos, he gets these police body cam videos, these dash cam videos, and he breaks them down and discusses them in such a way that you're able to get a different perspective about how a concealed carrier or a law enforcement officer or anybody like that could have handled certain real situations that they get into. And these videos are real situations. These videos are graphic situations in many cases. So keep that in mind if you're squeamish. But what he does is he breaks down the situations as they're occurring. And he's talking about what this person may have done right. Or what this person could have done differently. But when I watch active self-protection videos, I find them very, very useful. And I've seen just about all of them. And I would recommend very strongly that you also go to the YouTube channel Active Self Protection and check out John Correa in his presentations. He's also an instructor, I believe, and he has a website as well as his YouTube channel. And all of that information will be contained in the comment section of my uh, video here. But situational awareness is the most valuable tool that you have at your disposal. And it's just something that you've got to think about on a day-by-day -day basis and before you know it, using situational awareness will become second nature to you. And folks, while you're checking out all this other stuff, be sure to check out Not Just Guns in Mason, Michigan, www.notjustguns.com, a great little gun store in Mason, Michigan. They have just about anything you could possibly need. And if they didn't, when you got in that store, they can get it for you. So check them out, www.notjustguns.com. And folks, don't forget to check out Abaddon Apparel. That's where you can get your two improper shirts, your two improper hoodies, your two improper phone cases, your two improper mugs. Oh my God, there's too much stuff to be talking about because there's so much at Abaddon Apparel. There's the two improper channel and there's also other sites that you're familiar with too, as well as Abaddon Apparel's own original line of clothing. So Abaddon Apparel, that's where you get your shirts. And if you want two improper gear, go to Abaddon Apparel. And folks, I'm too improper. My email address is scrolling across the bottom of the screen as we speak right now. That's 2improper at gmail.com. If you want to reach Tattoo Cat, it's T-A-T, -T, the number 2-K-A-T at gmail.com. Reach any of us and we will answer you back, provided you're being polite about what it is you have to say and if we have the time. Thanks for watching, folks. God bless America and keep on protecting your families and yourselves. You are your own security and you are your family's own security. And you know it's always the right thing to do. And you will know I am too improper when I lay my finger upon thee. No!